Welcome to this tutorial brought to you by River City Graphics. Today I'll be showing you how to use the Puppet tool in After Effects. So to get started we're going to actually open up Photoshop and I'm going to be showing you the puppet that I created. Now keep in mind this is not my um, best character design skills. I'm just trying to get you something that you can um, understand and basically work with to understand the concepts. So I've made this little guy here. Um, he has different segmented arms and legs and I would definitely recommend creating something like this first um, before you go on to create a more dynamic character because you can get um, a lot of the basics down with a character like this faster than you can with something a little bit more difficult. So once you're in Photoshop and you create your character, what you're going to want to do is make sure that you have a transparent background. So you're going to have the checkerboard background and if you don't know how to do that you can just create a new document with a transparent background um, and move your character over there. So we're going to be saving this out by going up to File, Save for Web and Devices. So it's going to pull up this box. We're going to want to go click over on Original and then scroll down to PNG24. And so when we export it, that will retain the transparency within the image. So we're just going to click Save. And I'm just going to call it, um, I don't know, we'll say Human. All right. So now I'm just going to close this down and um, we'll just open up After Effects. So I have a new After Effects composition, 1280 by 720, which was the same size as my Photoshop document. So what I'm going to be doing is just double clicking into my project files and I can just import that PNG image. So now what we want to do is actually just take and just drag that out on the stage and it should clip pretty nicely because it's the exact same size. So now you can see we have our character um, from Photoshop over in After Effects. So now we're actually ready to start um, manipulating it and warping it around um, however you want. So the way that we're going to do that is by going up to the puppet tool and so you can see I have my tools up at the top and the puppet one is the one that looks like a little pin. It'll look just like this and so click on that tool and yours will probably look like this when you first open it if you haven't used this before. What you want to do first is click, um, there's a little title that says mesh. You want to click the checkbox next to that so that you can actually see the mesh and you're just going to click somewhere on your person. Now it'll make a point. Um, you can just take and click on it and then hit delete in order to get rid of that. Now you can see the mesh on your um, person or whatever you're taking and warping within After Effects. Now you have some other options up here. You have expansion um, and you have triangles and triangles is probably the thing you're going to be messing with. Um, basically you can see that your person is broken up into um, a lot of different triangles, currently 350. Now the more triangles you have, the cleaner animation you're going to get and it won't break in weird ways if you kind of bend things in certain uh, ways. Now, the problem is the more triangles you have, the more CPU power it's going to um, require in order to render out those animations. So, in general, keep your triangles at around 350 unless you run into a problem and then up it a little bit and then cut it back down. You can animate that within your um, settings down here. So let's finally get to this. Um, basically the, what you're going to do is if you guys caught my tutorial um, for Photoshop with Puppet Warp, it's very similar to that. What you're going to do is just take and you see that it kind of changes cursor when you're over what you can add the points onto and you're just going to click wherever you want there to be bendable parts. So at pretty much all of the joints. So I'm just going to do each of his leg and arm pieces and then maybe I'll take and put one on his head. Okay. So basically that's what we're going to be doing. So now what you can do is you can take and I'm just going to scroll this up so I can show you what After Effects is doing when you do that. Down under Effects you can see Puppet is open so we're going to open up Puppet then open up Mesh 1 then open up Deform and you can see here are all the different points that you have. So if you take and click on one of these um, you should be able to see it up here uh, selected so you can see we've selected that point. It's a solid circle. So as with all of these points, you can actually take and animate them. You can see that you have a keyframe right here. So you can actually take and move your stuff around. So on the first frame, it automatically creates all the keyframes. So we're just going to move out a second or so. And then we'll just say that we want to, I don't know, make and move up his leg. Now again, this is just, this isn't going to look great. It takes a while to get your characters to actually look like they're moving in the right way. And again, if you have a more believable character, um, you'll be able to get more believable movement. But let's say that we wanted him to raise his leg like that. Maybe he's kicking something, I don't know, <laughs> nudging back something. But you can see now that we have basically have that animation. So if we come back up in here, you can see that we have um, our animation on dot six, five, and 4, it appears. Um, basically the ones that have these little dots on them. And so you can see right now we have keyframes right here, and you can take and move these around just as you would normal keyframes um, in After Effects. 
So there are a couple of other tools um, that you can use with Puppet Warp um, besides just taking and moving around points and keyframing things. When you hold down on the Puppet Warp tool, um, you can get some other options. The first one is called the Starch tool. Basically what this does is it'll put a border around your person and if there's a spot on your person that you don't want to move around, you can basically just take and click that and you can see you can adjust how much um, starch or basically how rigid you want that person uh, or that part of your person to be so basically you can up the amount or the extent uh, accordingly and basically you just kind of fill in that area and then basically whenever you move an arm it's not going to take and bend the body it's just going to bend the arm um, so I should probably be able to show you guys that and so now it should leave the body more intact um, we might need to up the extent but for the most part that's what that tool um, actually ends up doing so maybe we'll just take and up the amount on that we'll back out here up the amount and then basically click in here and so now hopefully it won't move around see so you can see that it's keeping See, if I had a point right here at the shoulder, it wouldn't be moving that around, but you can see how instead of pulling the entire thing, it's pulling just a certain part. It's kind of breaking right there. So in certain situations, um, that will be very helpful to you. So I just wanted to take and show you guys that that is possible. So um, one more thing I wanted to show you guys is that you can actually take, now see, if we wanted to take and move this arm, we're going to grab the arm, and let's say that we wanted him to put his hand on his face for whatever reason. I keep saying he, technically it would be a she as well. Um, we're kind of having a problem here because um, his arm is behind his head and there's really no way to fix that unless you guys know about this tool. So what you can do is go and again hold down on your tools and go to the puppet overlap tool. Now what this does again is it puts the outline of your person. So if you've animated it, it kind of puts this box back around it. Now what we're going to want to do is actually take and in our settings you can say you can see that you have in front 50% and then you have extent 15 basically whatever this percentage is if it's more than um, zero then it's going to be in front if it's less then it's going to be behind so if we take and click over here on the arm you can see that as we add points and kind of start filling in that arm you can see that our arm has come in front of this because I have it at 50 percent in front so now it's actually taking and going in front of this other area now if I filled this in um, it would be on the same layer and it would kind of freak it out a little bit but you can take and basically set different um, percentages in order to get different body parts um, to be in front or behind others at different times so you can see now we have his arm in front there um, so if you're wondering why he has a blue arm, it's basically because if I had a red arm, I wouldn't be able to really show you if it's in front or behind because it would blend in regardless, so that's why he has one blue arm. So basically that is the um, puppet tool within After Effects. Now you can get some really cool effects with this, um, not only with characters, but also with other things. So I would definitely recommend playing around with it. It does take some time uh, to get used to, um, and it's not always great for all situations. In some situations, you might want to go with a more traditional animation type rather than making points like this. But if you're trying to quickly mock something up, or if something like this would suit your style, um, then I would definitely recommend it. So I hope you guys learned something in this tutorial. I hope you guys have fun with this uh, tool and feature in After Effects. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, and comment, and I'll see you next week with a new video tutorial. Thanks for watching.